good at eight, it's Molluska, and the first column that you want to put down will be uh, what organisms fit into Molluska. So over on the left under Molluska, you could put down like clams, oysters also fit in there, snails, and octopus. Clams, oysters, snails, octopus would be the ones that would be examples that belong to this uh, phylum. So what are some characteristics of most of the mollusca? And then we'll talk about individuals and maybe a little more detail of how they might do it differently. Uh, okay, they all have a something that's called a, a mantle. This is not advancing, I'll just have to look up here. They have a mantle. The mantle uh, is the, the is, helps to secrete parts of the shell and stuff like that. Okay, they all have some type of a shell. Sometimes it's external, sometimes, or most of the time it's external. There's a few of them that we'll talk about where the, the structure that's like the shell is actually inside. They have like an, an uh, not, not a regular skeleton on the inside, but they have something for support, okay? So this could provide support and protection, uh, the shell. And the halves of the shell, like if it's a clam, or it's an oyster, or it's a scallop, are called valves. So when they talk about each shell, they're talking about a valve. Uh, we're going to be dissecting the um, Clam. So when we study the talk about the clam here in a little more detail, you can learn some things of what we're going to cover there. Um, not sure what is going on here. Fix that. Try that again. Is busy doing something else. Funny is it's, it's changing on my screen, on my laptop, but not on, on your, so is it possible? Let's try one more thing. Yeah, that's the problem. It has it on another, like a my part of my monitor that's off to the right that you can't see. Now, let's see. And now we'll try it again. One slide too far. Okay, here's where we went. Okay, so each half of the shell is called a valve. And if it has more than one valve, we'll sometimes put words in front, like a bivalve or a univalve or something like that. Okay, they have a visceral mass. Now, where can you put that onto your chart uh, where it have body cavity? You can put visceral mass there. Okay, so for body cavity, they have a visceral mass, and what's contained in the visceral mass? It has, in that visceral mass, it has a heart, it has um, digestive and excretory organs. Digestive and excretory or organs, okay? So all three of those kinds of things make up this visceral mass. Okay, they all have something that corresponds to a foot uh, in it. In the clam, they actually have, the part that comes out of the clam almost looks like a tongue, but it's actually their foot. They use it for moving along. Uh, and we'll talk more about that here in a moment. Uh, they have another structure. Okay, so for movement, by the way, you could put 
uh, over here for movement, they use a muscular foot. Okay, so that's so that would be in that column. Then for um, obtaining food, they have a raspy radula. It's like a really raspy tongue, if you kind of think about it. Uh, a really raspy tongue, and it can uh, they can use it to scrape off you know, like flesh off of a, a, a fish or something like that, or if they are crawling like a snail crawling across a plant, can use its tongue to shred some of the plant's leaves, and so it can eat, uh, ingest them. So. Uh, So in the uh, mollusca, they divide this up into different classes. You have kingdom, phylum, class. Uh, into the class of mollusca, we have the bivalves. Bi means two. It means two-shelled. So that would be like the clams, the oysters, and the scallops would uh, fit into that one. Then we have a group, uh, another uh, group of organisms are called gastropoda. Gastro means stomach, and poda or ped means foot. So it's like they literally have a stomach attached to their feet. Uh, and what fits into this would be like the snails fit into that. And then we have cephalopoda. Ceph, does anybody remember what ceph stood for? It's on your shoulders. It rides on your shoulders, let's say that, your head. Okay, and then pod means what? Or ped means what? Foot. So it's an animal that basically looks like it's got a head with feet attached to it, which would be a, like an octopus, right? Okay, so these are the head-footed animals. Those would be like the octopus. So these are the main classes that uh, are in the phylum mollusca. So let's look at the uh, clam. This, these would be the bivalvia, and uh, it has two, sh two shells or two valves. Uh, you're going to be dissecting one like this. It has uh, two muscles that uh, can close itself, and if it relaxes it and kind of sticks its tongue out, its foot out, uh, it has to relax the muscles to do that. Uh, and so to open this up when you are uh, dissecting this, you, we're gonna have to cut these two muscles so the valves will actually open up because it naturally wants to be closed. Um, so the clams, oysters, and scallops fit into this one. Uh, this valve has different parts to it. If you've ever looked at a live clam, it has kind of a brownie layer on the outside that, of that. Uh, looks like the material often that some animals make horns out of. So we call it the horny layer. Uh, then under, in between that, if you've ever looked at a broken um, clamshell, there's white in between. And that's the prismatic layer. And it's made out of calcium carbonate. The same stuff that limestone's made of. So they're taking minerals out of the water to make their own shell. Um, and then on the inside, they have the pearly layer that has kind of an iridescent, you know what pearl looks like, the color of real pearl, not synthetic pearl, but a real pearl. Um, oysters secrete that, or the mantle will secrete that if it's being irritated, well, it, it'll secrete extra of this if it's being irritated like by a grain of sand. It will secrete some of that um, pearly layer around the outside of it. Now the clam that you're gonna look at might have bumps on the inside where it secreted the pearly layer over the top of it, but it's, it doesn't, clams don't make pearls, only oysters do. Uh, then they have this thing that looks like a tongue sticking out of the clam, but it's actually their foot. 
And so a clam, uh, let's imagine this is sand right here, and they're kind of in the, the uh, sand like this. They will stick their foot out, push it out, and that will slide the shell forward a little bit in the sand. Then they'll retract the foot and do it again, and it'll push the shell forward a little bit like so. That's how the clam is capable of, of moving along. So in the movement portion over here, you can let's say they have a muscular foot. I think we already uh, had that probably already. Now, uh, I'm going to have to go down a little farther so you can see these. Uh, in, the, in the clam, uh, at one end, op, kind of opposite of which way the foot points, are uh, two holes or two openings that water can enter and water can leave. So, the, so when it comes to kind of like circulation, um, we don't want to put that there. We want to put that in the place where it's helpful for respiration, but it's also for helping them to get food to come into the body. They have the, so the water will come in, and if it has food particles in it, uh, it will circulate through here. And uh, it has some mucus-like layers where these particles can, will get stuck on it, and then it'll use cilia to kind of push it towards the mouth and it'll go into its digestive system. Uh, so they're filter feeders, as it calls it. They're filtering out particles out of the water. Now, they also have some structures here, uh, or right here, I should say, uh, that are gills. They're pretty, kind of pretty flexible, and that's how they get respiration. So if you go up respiration, um, they have a pair of gills. Now, others might do it a little bit different than that, but that's how they get their uh, oxygen is through gills. They actually have gills. They look like two flaps inside of their, the shell. As far as circulation, this is where we want to put this information here. They have an open circulatory system. So what vessels that a closed circulatory system has do they not have? Okay. What connects the two halves of a closed circulatory system? They have the arteries and the veins, and what was in between them? Starts with the C. C-A-P, capillaries, that's the word I'm looking for, capillaries, they don't have capillaries. So they have um, a heart, so they, they definitely do have a heart uh, that pumps blood. It will pump it uh, toward one end of their visceral mass, and then the their blood will seep through the visceral mass to the opposite side, and they will have another blood vessel that will drain that, that part back toward the heart, and then they have a little chamber around the heart that kind of fills up with this fluid, and then the heart pumps it out. So it, it does not travel in capillaries through part of that. So that makes it an open circulatory system. So they have blood, like a heart, and then they have blood vessels but no capillaries. In the um, reproduction part here, um, the mollusks do not have any um, asexual so you can put down asexual, not. Uh, for sexual, they do form these trochophores, which are ciliated larvae. A lot of them have it, not all of them, but a lot of them have this. And you can see it's extremely tiny. Okay, this is talking about micrometers. 
So they're way too small for you to see with the eye. You'd have to have microscopes to be able to see these ciliated. So if they're ciliated, that means what? They can move around, right? They have cilia to move them around. So you could put under movement, uh, in addition to the muscular foot, you could say the trochophores have cilia. In other words, that larval stage has cilia to help them move around. Okay, the next class we want to talk to about uh, is uh, the gastropoda, gastro, stomach, poda, foot, gas. And these are like the snails. Also the slugs fit into this one as well. Um, they have basically like a stomach on their foot. Uh, they have a valve, but it's spiraled, right, usually. And there's just one of them. They don't have two, two of those, they just have one. So often we refer to those as univalves, univalves. So that would, this bell will give it some uh, support as well. So they're, um, they have a shell that's secreted by the mantle as well. Um, they're, the slug is shell-less, it doesn't have a shell. So not every one of these gastropods has to have a shell, but snails do. Okay, that radula that we talked about before, where they can, you know, that r little raspy tongue like of theirs that they can shred food and uh, is located right here uh, on the snail. You usually can't see that part. You know, we're always looking like this. It's kind of hidden by their head end. So as far as cephalization on here, uh, some of them have a head, right? Like the snails look like they have a head end. Uh, an octopus definitely have a head. Yeah. And then they do have a mantle cavity uh, that secretes the shell and it has some other purposes that we'll get to in a moment. The cephalopods are the head foot, so into this we would have like the squid and the octopus would uh, fit in that, uh, or the nautilus I guess would also fit in into this one. Uh, looks like they have a head attached directly to their legs. They have a valve. Uh, some of them have the valve on the outside, but like the octopus and the squid, you really can't see that so much on the outside. Uh, so they're like they don't have a shell on the outside, but they do have a structure on the inside that gives them some support. Okay, so some of them have like this, what, what I would call an internal shell, still being secreted by a mantle. They also have a radula uh, that, now remember these are going to have tentacles and they can bring food up close to their mouth and from what I understand for an octopus, they have almost like a beak-like structure that uh, can really shred things. And I've heard that some people have, I don't know, got their hand in that part of the octopus, and that beak-like structure can really hurt. Uh, so, but an octopus is, is really, I don't know, it's a really fascinating animal. I just saw a uh, Another little video clip on octopus. I don't know even what I was watching at the time, but um, you know they have the ability to uh, disguise themselves, uh, and the whole body doesn't have to be the same color. They showed a uh, a little video clip of this octopus that looked like the normal color of an octopus, and then I don't know something frightened it or whatever but it immediately responded by making one half of the octopus just suddenly turn black. I mean, just in an instant, it was black. And the other part looked uh, colored much like this, which would be, look like 
maybe broken pieces of shell and sand that were on the bottom. So one part was in the light, was colored like that, and the part that was in the shade was black. I mean, you just you just could not see that part of it. Um, they, uh, as far as movement is concerned, what you could put down for there for for movement for them is they have. Uh, a siphon or a funnel that they can shoot water out. They can move very fast away from their enemy. It's like jet propulsion, sort of like this, uh, I guess you would call it. And it turns out as far as invertebrates, there's no animal that can move faster than they can by shooting this water out like that. Okay, now defense mechanisms. This one could be probably under responses. Um, they can, like the octopus, as you can see it's doing right here, they can shoot out some ink. And that ink uh, kind of confuses their predators and then they can kind of run off uh, away from there and hide if they need to. Um, but So another defense mechanism was their ability to disguise themselves, camouflage themselves. So the purpose of that is just to uh, confuse their attackers and give them a chance to escape. It doesn't, um, you know, if, if the predator was smart enough, he'd just go straight through it, you know, and, but remember, they don't have a brain like we do, you know, that we've learned how that's just a defense mechanism. I'd just go straight through it, and octopus is on the other side. Now, their predators aren't that smart. Uh, now, an interesting thing about an octopus is they are remarkably intelligent. Um, I've watched a number of videos where they're trying to just find out just how smart are these uh, octopi <laughs> uh, in that um, in one of them, they're, one of the favorite things they like to eat are clay are uh, crabs. And uh, I mean, they will pounce on a crab so quickly that crab doesn't have a chance to run away. Um, and um, what they did in one of the experiments is they had this little jar, well, for to, the first experiment, I should do that one first. They had uh, a, a glass, well, probably made out of plexiglass, uh, compartment or a case and into it they put a crab and it just had and in the side of this plexiglass was a little tiny little hole and the crab couldn't get out and you'd think the octopus was too big to get through but since the octopus doesn't really have a shell it can it just it moves its tentacles in and it'll just kind of like squash its body down whatever's necessary and it was wasn't long and the whole octopus was inside this little compartment where the poor little crab was and he was lunch. Okay. In another experiment they put one of these little crabs into like a jar. It was about, I well I'm not sure exactly how big around them, but let's say it was this big around, maybe about this tall, and it had a lid that screwed on it. And put that in there with the octopus and the octopus saw the crab and immediately tried to get it but was kind of a bit confused because it couldn't get to it you know kept bumping into this glass and with time this octopus discovered that he could actually screw the lid off so it actually used its tentacles to actually unscrew the lid and then got the crab and uh, I think if I remember right they did it a second time, and he didn't wasn't confused at all. He immediately went over there and unscrewed the lid and got his crap. You know, so it's remarkable how uh, intelligent they are. And as far as the nervous system, you know, we had talked about some of them. They have like three ganglia uh, on there, but for an octopus, I mean, it's. A, 
It has more like a brain, a functioning brain. Um, it has all, it has a, a great sense of vision. Um, whereas a clam, you can't see anything. You know. um, sense of taste, sense of touch, sense of smell, sense of balance. They have quite a, you know, quite a range in them. I mean, even a, a clam can tell if it's upside down or not. So it does have some some degree of sense of balance. Now. They don't move real fast. But. Okay, so the last one we want to do the top row there are the is the kinodermata, and in kind in kino, or it has to do with being spiny, and you're going to be dissecting a starfish, so you'll get to feel how spiny this this surface is. But it's not the same kind of spiny as if you're handling a cactus. Not that kind of spiny, but you can tell it's really bumpy on the surface. Uh, and the, the derm part, dermata, is the skin. So it has a really spiny skin on the outside of it. And into this are the starfish, the sea urchin, and the sand dollar. So not all starfish have to have just five rays. Here's one you can see that has many more than that. We're gonna, ours is gonna look much like that one does right there. Um, sea urchins ha have lots of little spines that stick out from them as well. And then sand dollars are like this. Now, usually if you find a sand dollar, uh, this, it doesn't really quite look like this because it usually has kind of skin on the outside of it. But if you take it out of the water and and, you know, where it dries out, dies, and dries out, that will come off, and then you have this really light-colored uh, shell that actually is, is somewhat hollow on the inside and porous, has holes that let water through, and uh, has this, usually this star-shaped uh, design on, the, on one side of it. Okay, so let's look at the starfish, since that's the one that you're going to dissect. And for symmetry, uh, the starfish has radial symmetry, okay? It has radial symmetry, um, but in its, in its larval state, uh, uh, these starfish or, or, or sea urchins or whatever like that, uh, some of them have what uh, is a bilateral. So as adults, they're radial. But in the larval stage, they're bilateral. Okay, they have a water vascular system, and this water vascular system um, does a lot of things. Um, one is, uh, you could put that over there for movement. Uh, it can move around because of this water vascular system. Uh, because on the water vascular system, and here's the parts that make it up, it has a tube that runs around in a circle like this called the ring canal, and then this ring canal has little tubes that go out this way uh, into each of the rays or arms of a, of a starfish, and then attached along this tube, this radial tube is what we call the tube going out, are little feet, little tube feet. They're kind of like a suction cup, or they have a little bulb on the top of it, and on the bottom is like a suction cup. And when this gets squeezed, then it releases. And when it is, when this is released, it it creates a suction and it attaches to whatever. Uh, so that uh, those tube feet, um, and then one more. Thing as part of it that you will see on your starfish on the top side, it has a little round structure that is not shiny. It's kind of it looks kind of rough. It's, it's porous. It allows water to go into this ring canal, and it acts like a filter. 